Welcome to VHDL lectures. My name is Najim Lawal and today we will be discussing VHDL designs. The outline for today's discussion is this discussion around design flow for digital systems, available CAD tools, design flow using VHDL and the implementation alternatives also known as programmable gates. Designing design flow for digital systems. To implement a, a digital system, first we need to start and we need to analyze and consider the de design specifications, what is possible and what is realistic, what we can capture and how to capture it. So then we look into the available tools that we can use. So it could be a manual design tool, in which case you take pen and paper and then you draw it out. It could be a computer-aided tool, in which case you, you have a way of entering it and dragging and dropping and connecting the models, the schematic, or it could be a, a text entry tool. So we need to know which available tools we have, what are the available tools we have for the design entry. After entering the design, then we simulate to see if the design satisfies the objective. This process of design entry and simulation to verify must be iterated until we are satisfied. And it is possible that a particular design has multiple design objectives and that are conflicting. So different designs perhaps must meet different objectives and we can verify this by iteratively simulating and confirming the objectives that have been satisfied. So when, we've, when we are done with this, then we can transfer the design into, into, into implementation. We, we go ahead and implement them, and the implementation can be done automatically if you are using a CAD tool, or we may have to go into the laboratory or workshop and implement the design. So implementation technology can take a look, can look like this. We have the components that we want to use. We can pluck them out from the environment, in case of software environment, or we can go into the workshop once again and take the standard components. We analyze their behavior by going through the data sheet, then we connect them up and then we implement the components or we can buy some programmable gates out there or we can go into the fabrication lab and then we can implement an application specific integrated cycles that meet our objective so can we do this do we need characters how do we or in what way do we need characters how can we implement our design with the current technology and with the current demand of digital systems. For this, there will be, I will discuss two hints that, that kind of suggest to us in which direction that we should go when it comes to designing digital systems. Number one is that if we look into history and we use, we capture the history of a transistor available number of gates per, per chip, we call that transistor count. If you look into history from the 70s, then we can capture this history in Moore's law and say that the, the number of transistors that can be placed without expensive costs or without too much costs per dial doubles every two years. So, and it kind of follows like this. So we have a trend here in the in the plot on the screen, and we can get more from the Wikipedia link. So you know that uh, if this trend continues, then we can say that uh, very, very soon, there will be so many transistors available that you as an engineer cannot intelligently manipulate and take advantage of all the available transistors. So humanly speaking, we cannot manage all the transistors manually. Then when you look as an example of this MOS law is, is this. In the 80s, we have this uh, laptop, if you can call it like that. It's called Oxbone Executives. And then it has, it's very powerful, top of the line in the those days. But then when you compare it with 2007 iPhone, then you notice a, a lot of things that are different. First is the size. 
And then when you look at the performance, the Osborne Executive runs at 4 megahash, whereas the iPhone at that time was more than 400 megahash. So it's 100 times faster. The iPhone is 100 times faster, even though it is smaller. When you compare the weight, the iPhone is 100 times smaller. And when you also look at the price tags, then you can say that the Osborne Executive is 10 times, about 10 times more expensive. And when you look at the size, the physical size, then you can also say that the Osborne Executive is way 400 times heavier. What this means is that uh, between the 80s and between the 2007 and 2007, transistor count has gone so small. We, we have so many transistor counts per inch that uh, the whole of the uh, Osborne executive can, 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 can fit 100 times smaller, even in a volume that is 400 times smaller. So when we look at that, then we kind of say that, okay, so we have a lot of transistors that we can use, a lot of transistors that can be implemented as CPU or implemented as memory. Okay, let us do both. But then technology does not allow us because we now find out that uh, we have the possibility to implement more computational power, but the memory available is, is still limited. The, gr the growth rate is not, it's not identical. It's not the same. So we have more CPU power than the, than the memory that we have. So we also need an intelligent way of managing the available CPU computational power given the limited amount of memory that we have. So what this means is that uh, to find an intelligent way of manipulating all the available transistors and combining them with the available memory, we need, we cannot continue manually. It's too many logics to handle. So we need another design scenario. For this, we will perhaps use hardware description languages. So by hardware description language, it means that we can have a software environment that describes and captures what we have as goal in the specification of a hardware design that we like to implement. What we also mean is that we can have a very high level environment for simulating and validating that the design objectives are satisfied. When they are satisfied, then we simply click a few buttons if you have the necessary tools and the necessary implementation target, targets. You go and grab a cup of coffee, you, 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 trick, you, you, you push a button before then, and then by the time you come back from your cup of coffee, the whole design is done and you are ready to implement something. So all you have to do then is to transfer and download into FPGA. Then we can talk about this and say that what is hardware description language? The emphasis here is that it is description. It is a description of what we would like to implement in hardware. It is a language that helps the engineer to describe what should be implemented, giving a set of input, and we would like to realize a set of output, how to manipulate the inputs to achieve the output, which are the available building blocks that we like to use to achieve the output. So what this means is that we can textually enter the description. We can, we can have a, a human readable, a language that is easy to communicate between us. So we can compare our design, for example, with schematic, and we realize that it is easier to read and understand rather than to have a way of identifying each of the schematic components. Also, it means that uh, a description of the, of the hardware in, in the plain text can, and it most likely should be independent of the implementation technology, which means that uh, a description today will be able to work in 10 years time. It also means that a description that meets one that is implementable on a particular vendor should be implementable on another vendor without so much 
link or tie to the implementation technology. What advantage here also is that uh, we have modules that are reusable, so you can, if you want to implement a big project, we can actually do break them down into smaller projects that we can implement, parameterize them, adjust the size and the implementation parameters such that uh, we can connect smaller modules together to, to have bigger module. So emphasis here is that we have description rather than programming. And when we talk about VHDL, what we actually mean is that uh, there are, it's a hardware description language, but a a particular type of hardware description language that is called hard high very high speed integrated cycles hardware description language it is there is also another type called verilog hdl it's very that one is also popular so these are the two main popular hdls there are other hdl like jhdl based on java we have pi python based hdl you know, the list continue, but these are the commonly used ones. And uh, historically, briefly, it's sponsored and promoted by the Department of Defense in the U.S. because they would like to have, they are having enormous amount of projects that need to be documented and communicated between different arms of the defense. And uh, it has been standardized and the standardization continues. So from 87 and even the most popular one, 93, has been standardized so in vhdl we always have an idea that we like to implement we have a specification that we like to that we like to transfer into hardware what this means is that uh, with advancement in technology and with uh, competition from the industry or from the market then we have increasing demand we have increasing possibilities to implement and we also have very very high and competitive demand to deliver the solution quickly so you have a specification and you have to meet this specification you have to implement it within the next one month because if you don't the cost of the competitor will capture the market and do the same thing so the idea then is that uh, in order to have a very very high performance and very very reliable implementation what you want to do then is to use high level description language in order to implement what you want to implement as quickly as possible so furthermore on background to vhdl we have the following reasons why we would like to use vhdl because it is high level the the communication and the understanding is very easy for us human being and we can analyze the bug even mentally before we start simulating we know if you know the language construct very clearly we know if a particular statement or implementation is going to work the way the specification detects specifies or not it also means that uh, the design can be implemented in a way that is not tied to the technology so we have many vendors out there the vendors have many technology between different families and then even these families are you know there are variations between the power budget and the performance of within the family and many families from a vendor and there are many vendors so you want as an engineer to implement your hardware and you want to use this vendor today this family today with this performance or timing objective and you like to change your mind tomorrow to another vendor and another objective so your module that you are implementing should be portable among all these vendors among all the existing technology and uh, what that means is that you should be able to have a standardized language that you can understand today that you can communicate to somebody else that you can sell and you can also somebody else can analyze and be able to use it easily and of course because of the demand from the market and from the competitor you would like to do all these things as quickly as possible so that you can from having a very good idea for a product for a hardware design into prototyping and manufacturing you want the time taken to be very very short so that's all we have today Thank you for joining us. Now you know a little bit more about VHDL.